Hello, a very warm welcome to you from SGT University. I am Dr. Asta Chaudhary, Reader, Department of Oral Medicine and Radiology at Faculty of Dental Sciences. Today we shall be discussing about extraoral radiography. This topic shall be covered in two sessions. The learning objective of the present session would be introduction to extraoral radiography and its contrast with the intraoral technique in terms of equipment and procedure. We shall be discussing in detail about lateral radiography and the projections that shall be covered today would be the true lateral skull and the mandibular lateral oblique projections. So let's begin. As the name suggests, in extraoral radiography, the image receptor is placed outside the patient's oral cavity. Apart from this basic difference, it differs from intraoral radiography in terms of the image receptor used, the X-ray machine, the use of grids and change in the exposure parameters. The image receptor system that is used in extraoral radiography is composed of screen film and intensifying screens. This creates an image receptor system which is 10 to 60 times more sensitive to X-rays than the film alone. Because in this system, one X-ray photon that falls on the screen is converted into 4000 visible light photons which then exposes the film. And thus, this image receptor system greatly reduces the patient exposure. So now we move on to the extraoral radiography proper. Now if we talk about the technique for extraoral radiography, there are certain guidelines which should be considered for practicing the extraoral radiography. Now the technique is basically divided into three sections. First we will prepare the x-ray machine, then we prepare the patient and then we position the patient as per the projection that we want to take. Now coming to the preparation of the equipment. First we load the cassette then we place the cassette into the cassette carrier and we set the exposure parameters. The next step is the patient preparation. Now it is very important that the whole procedure is explained to the patient beforehand. The patient should be placed with lead apron and a thyroid collar should not be used as it might interfere with the projection or the shadow might cast on the film. The patient should be asked to remove any earrings, eyeglasses, necklaces, hearing aids, hairpins, complete dentures or removable partial dentures. The next step in the extraoral technique is the patient positioning. Now before we position the patient for the extraoral radiograph, it is important to know certain reference planes that are to be considered while positioning the patient. The first one is the mid sagittal plane. Now this is determined by a line that is coincident with the sagittal suture between the upper margins of the parietal bone. The next reference plane is the canthomieter line also called as the orbitomieter line. Now this is an imaginary line joining the central point of the external auditory canal to the outer canthus of the eye. This line represents the base of the skull hence it is also called as radiographic baseline. Another reference plane which is used in patient positioning is the Frankfurt horizontal plane. Now this plane connects the superior border of the external auditory canal with the infraorbital rim. This is also called as Porion orbital plane. The canthomieter line and the Frankfurt horizontal plane makes an angle of 10 degrees with each other. Now we move on to the technique of lateral radiography. Now as the name suggests, lateral radiography focuses on the lateral aspect of the object. Now in lateral radiography there are two techniques. Either it could be a true lateral positioning or an oblique lateral positioning. In true lateral, 
the film or the image receptor and the sagittal plane of the patient's head are parallel to each other and the x-ray beam is perpendicular to both that is the film as well as the patient's sagittal plane whereas in oblique lateral positioning the film and sagittal plane of the patient's head are not parallel and the x-ray beam is perpendicular to only the film but oblique to the sagittal plane of the patient so the first radiographic projection that we will be discussing is the true lateral skull now as the name suggests this is basically focusing on the lateral aspect of the skull so now we will be looking at the indications of the true lateral radiograph now, the lateral skull radiograph is effective to diagnose the fracture of cranium or cranial base the arrow mark here marks the fracture line which is running in the skull this is another skull radiograph showing multiple fractures in the skull this is another picture showing the depressed skull fracture another indication of the lateral skull radiograph is to show the downward and backward displacement of the maxilla especially in the middle third fractures lateral skull radiograph can also be used to investigate the paranasal sinuses including the frontal sphenoidal and the maxillary sinuses the multiple conditions which can affect the skull vault can be diagnosed with the lateral skull radiograph now this is a picture showing diffuse radio opacities in the skull vault characterizing the cotton wool appearance as seen in paget's disease the picture on the left shows multiple round radio lucencies in the skull which is suggestive of multiple myeloma the radiograph on the right shows linear arrangement of bony trabeculae of the skull characterizing the hair on end appearance as seen in sickle cell anemia or thalassemia any conditions which affect the size and shape of the cella turcica like the tumors of the pituitary gland can be easily diagnosed by visualizing the anatomy of the cella turcica in the lateral skull radiograph now after the indications we move on to the technique and positioning for true lateral skull the first is the image receptor and patient positioning the image receptor will be placed along the side of the patient's cheek such that the mid sagittal plane is parallel to it the film is adjusted so that the upper circumference of the skull is half inch below the upper border of the cassette the patient should be asked to keep the teeth in occlusion and the occlusion plane should be kept parallel to the floor the central x-ray beam is directed perpendicular to the receptor as well as the mid sagittal plane of the patient and the central beam is centered over the external auditory meatus the exposure parameters that can be used are 70 kV and 20 to 30 mA now for the resultant image you have to understand that this is a conventional radiograph that is it is a two dimensional representation of the lateral aspect of the skull with superimposition of the right and left halves of the skull so the structures that are closer or nearer to the image receptor are less magnified than the structures which are located closer to the x-ray source so some discrepancy in the superimposition of both the sides is always evident now we move on to the next extraoral radiographic projection which is the oblique lateral this oblique radiography could be of three types the first is the mandibular body projection which focuses on the mandibular body mandibular ramus projection which predominantly shows the mandibular ramus and the condylar region next is the bimolar projection where oblique mandibular body projections of both the sides are taken on a single image 
by using a lead sheet to cover one half of the image receptor. Interesting thing to note about lateral oblique radiography is that these projections can be taken with the use of intraoral x-ray machine. But since the image receptor is placed outside the oral cavity, they are categorized as extraoral radiographs. Now we come to the mandibular oblique body projections. Coming to the indications of this radiograph, to assess the presence or position of an unerupted or impacted teeth, to detect the fractures of the mandible, to evaluate lesions like cyst, benign tumors or malignant tumors in the mandibular body region and these can also be specifically used as an alternative when intraoral views are unobtainable because of severe gagging or trismus. Now for placing the film, the cassette is held by the patient flat against the cheek centered over the area of interest which is the body of mandible overlying the molars. The lower border of the cassette is placed parallel to and about 2 cm below the inferior border of mandible. The patient is seated upright in dental chair and is instructed to rotate the head to the side of interest about 10 to 15 degrees from the mid sagittal plane. The chin is raised and the mandible is protruded. Next is the position of the central x-ray beam. The x-ray beam is directed from the opposite side about 2 cm below the angle of the mandible through the radiographic keyhole and centering on the body of the mandible and perpendicular to the horizontal plane of the film. The reason for protrusion of mandible was to create adequate space in the radiographic keyhole region. The exposure parameters that can be used are 70 kilovolt and 8 to 10 milliamperes which are fixed in the intraoral machines. So since this radiograph is taken with an intraoral radiographic machine only the exposure time can be altered and the exposure time can be kept same as that used in the mandibular molar region. In the resultant image a clear image of the posterior teeth, the alveolus, the body of the mandible with any pathology that is present in the region can be visualized. The next projection is the mandibular ramus projection. As the name suggests, here the area of interest is the mandibular ramus area and the condylar region. Thus, any pathologies affecting these regions can be visualized easily through this radiograph. The pathologies could be cyst, tumors, any lesion, fractures and the, this radiograph can also be used as a specific view for salivary gland and temporomandibular joint. Now coming to the technique for mandibular ramus projection. The patient's head shall be tilted towards the side of interest such that the condyle of the area of interest and the contralateral angle of the mandible form a horizontal line. The patient is also asked to protrude the mandible. The central x-ray beam will be directed towards the imaged ramus about 2 cm below the inferior border of mandible of the opposite side at the region of first molar with a negative vertical angulation of 10 to 15 degrees. The resultant radiograph here will show a clear image of the third molar, the retromolar area, the angle of mandible, the ramus and the condylar head. So today we have discussed the technique and positioning of true lateral skull, mandibular lateral oblique body projection, mandibular lateral oblique ramus and the bimolar views. In the next session, we shall be discussing about cephalometric radiography, the posterior anterior skull projections and the occipitomental projections. Till then, keep learning, keep growing. See you next time. Thank you.